Pani Fabian Dziszyń. Nie. Can I just check with you first of all, how's everybody looking injury-wise? Have you any... Um, we've got one injury who concerned Ryan Shawcross. Um, unfortunately, he uh, tweaked his knee on Tuesday. Um, so we're going to check him. Uh, he is a doubtful. Uh, like we have said, he'll probably miss next game. Uh, we're hoping he's going to be okay for a little bit. Um, but we'll have to see how he progresses with the moment. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to be fit. And in terms of your long-term list, Bojan's been out a long, long time. What's his recovery schedule looking like? No, he's on track. Uh, guys went out to see him this, this week, actually. Uh, dressing OK. Um, hoping that he's uh, come over for a couple of days before the end of the season, maybe come for the, the last home game. Um, we'll see him again, but he's, he's on track. He's progressing. They're all set to join you, what, pre-season, presumably? Yeah. yeah. He won't be ready uh, for the beginning of pre-season. He won't be joining in and doing the initial work that, uh, that the main group will be doing. So uh, he's still a few weeks off that. So I hope he goes to plan that um, hopefully he'll be up to speed by the first month of the pre-season. Can you give us a sense of job satisfaction? You're on 50 points. Uh, a lot being made of the uh, record points total and, and league position and everything. Um, with two games to go. How, how, how satisfying is that from you from a personal point of view? Well, I've said a couple of times that I think if we do uh, exceed the 50 points that we made, obviously we've, we've equaled that from, from last year. Uh, if we exceed it this year, I think uh, it'd be more satisfying for everybody because we've, we've had to deal with a lot of injuries, long term injuries to, to key players. As I mentioned, all the Mingy as well. Uh, Ryan Shawcross has been out for some time. Glenn Wheeler as well, I recall. So there's any number of key elements of the team have, have been unavailable to us. So we, we kept going. Uh, the depth of the squad has helped in that regard. And, uh, we've been able to accrue a, a decent amount of points now. For, um, so here we, we're sat here on 50 points, exactly what we, we achieved last year, which we were delighted with. But uh, two games to go, we've got an opportunity to exceed it. So uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do that. Your sixth management job, I mean, how, how much enjoyment are you getting out of it at the moment? It just looks a really nice fit, you and the club. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think um, you get a sense when you first walk through the door and you go to a new club. Um, you just get, it's, it's not something you point your finger on, but you, can, you get a sense of the place and the people that are involved in the club, and obviously the owners as well, the exceptional owners. Um, I'm straight from the very first day, I walked through the door, I just sensed that this was a club that I could really get into, get, get a bond with, they have empathy with, and uh, it's, it's always dependent on the results you get, obviously, but uh, I just felt with the people that were here would give me an opportunity really just to, to integrate and, uh, and progress here. So thankfully, the last two years have been really enjoyable. And I suppose it begs the question, where next in, in terms of the next level? What, what's the target from here on in? <coughs> well, the initial target was to, to be a top 10 Premier League club. If we uh, get a couple more points on the board, uh, I think we'll retain that for the second year run. So that suggests that's something that we're capable of um, on a regular basis now. Top 10 finishes um, are difficult uh, in the Premier League. but. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to do it for the second time next year. We'll try and do it once again. And then maybe uh, if you get a decent run, you can invite yourself in, in higher positions uh, like, like Southampton this year. Uh, Swans have done very well uh, as well. So uh, those are the type of clubs that we, we're in and around. Um, so we'll not to work hard again next year to, to obtain it, but uh, we just sense that's where we're at at the moment. And, Progressing, uh, invest in the, in the squad and the quality of the squad, then uh, we can continue to progress. I think uh, there will come a point in the future that we all understand that we may find it difficult to go any high, but uh, I don't think we're at that point at the moment. Do you have to have dreams of maybe Europa League? I mean, a lot of people <coughs> seem reluctant to sort of admit that they, they'd fancy the Europa League, but I mean, is that, has that got to be a long term target for you? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to take this club into Europe. If we can do that, I think that shows how we're 
I think we're still going in the right direction. That's an obvious target for us. Um, people will suggest, well, once you're qualified, then it is there's a burden, but uh, it's a burden we we can go uh, with pleasure because and I know this club has had great memories of the last time we've been here. They really enjoyed the experience, and I think everybody here would would be delighted if in the future we we could attain that. So it's something that we won't shy away from. We won't try and avoid it at all costs. Um, there would be uh, demands on, on the playing group and, um, and the club itself, but um, I think it's certainly something that we should strive to, to try and achieve. And if we do, then you try and, once you're in, you, you try and win. You talk about investment. I guess that that involves long conversations with your chairman. How how, how much backing do you foresee getting from him in the next few weeks? Because I, I guess. Finishing encouragingly high in the Premier League gives you a, a good hand in the transfer market. Yeah, I think we we're having conversations as we speak with players, agents, representatives, and um, at the moment they, they seem to be progressing well. So we're, we're quite encouraged by the initial conversations that we have. In obviously, it's it's not easy to, to get players off the line, and uh, um, all the conversations have to take place, and everything has to. Be right in terms of um, the finance. Obviously, is, is the obvious one, but it's, uh, the, the opportunity that we can present to players and um, the option that we we are as a as a Premier League club now. I think that's changed. I think uh, we're viewed in a different light now. I think uh, a lot of representatives of players view us as a viable option now. That's, that's encouraging because that, that makes uh, the pool of players that potentially could become small players and becomes bigger. So uh, we've got more choice uh, and more varied choice than possibly we've had in the past. So we'll, we'll, we'll exploit that hopefully and uh, bring the right players in. In an ideal world, do you have a number of new players in mind? Um, difficult to say. I, I think uh, from my point of view, it's, it's about having a number of players that even if you, you you never get exactly what you want, or as many as you feel you want, it's, uh, it's very difficult to do that. It's an exceptional year if you do manage it. Uh, in my experience, on very few occasions I've been able to get every target that I wanted before the season starts. But so uh, if if we do the work that we need to do, then uh, um, and we've been sure that all the targets that we go for are, are, are A targets rather than going from a an A target to a B target because the A target is unavailable and we'll be fine. I think it's important that we, we go for the quality that we need, the quality that can maybe push straight into the first 11 um, and, and we get, invest in the top end and then and the depth of squad that we have will, will still be strong. Are you looking to do your business early? Is that what's not Ideally, idea? yeah. I, I think uh, I would prefer that. Um, but as I say, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to do that. So. Some of the better deals I've done in the past have been like in the, the last minutes of, of windows. So you have to wait sometimes for, for the ones that you want. So if you can get them done early and in the building ready to go, if you like the third one, come back, then it will be delighted. That's the incoming possibilities. What about outgoing? A lot of speculation about Azmir. Can you give us a, an update on his situation? Uh, nothing's changed. Uh, I think I've mentioned it on numerous occasions. Uh, Sit down with, with Asmir and, and his people at the end of the season and we'll have uh, an honest discussion and uh, see where that takes us. Um, my my view on it hasn't changed. Uh, I want Asmir to stay here. Uh, I feel we can offer him um, a good platform and, uh, and we're a good option for, for both players now, including Asmir. He's been outstanding in this town here. Uh, we want that to continue. Um, but, just the fact that he's in the last year of his contract, contract and um, well, we discuss that situation with, with Asmir and his people, but uh, in my view on, on Asmir, um, his future hasn't changed at all. Are, are financial demands an issue? Oh, financial demands are, will always be part of the discussion. Um, that's, that's a given, but uh, I don't think that's something that uh, couldn't be overcome if there is a discrepancy. We're not really into the detail of that yet um, until we actually sit down and we, 
we won't not really know what, what the aspiration is in terms of a new contract for, for ASME or, or the aspirations of his, of his representatives. So, um, it's all something that will, will be resolved hopefully to a positive conclusion for, for ourselves uh, when we sit down. It seems to have gone on a while. At what point do you need to draw a line on it? Well, no, I, I think the, the plan was always to, to speak at the end of the, the year, so that really hasn't, at that time scale hasn't really changed. Um, but that's still what is going to happen. We'll, we'll sit down and, uh, as I said, we'll discuss the options that maybe he has, and certainly our option is, is that we keep him here and, uh, and he continues to progress as one of the top keepers in the Premier League. So they've been able to do that here. So it's, uh, to do. Are you confident he'll be here then, July 3rd? That's your, that's your good feeling? I'm very hopeful, yeah. I'm very hopeful. And in terms of your final game of the season, Liverpool against uh, possibly Mr Gerrard, can I just ask you, a lot of tributes have been made to Stephen. Um, you're talking about maybe making that transition to coaching and management. You, you've made that successful transition. How challenging is it? Yeah, it's not easy. Uh, when you initially make the decision or make the, the leap into the unknown, which it was to a certain extent with my first role as, as an international manager, which was probably a little bit different from, from most uh, career paths. Um, but um, I would suggest just, just go for it. He will have opportunities. It's about making sure you pick the right one. Um, initially, you need good people to support you. To guide you in the right way. Eventually, you'll find your own way. You'll have your own philosophy in terms of how you think the game will be played. It's about being able to get that across, and um, while you you get gaining an understanding of what you need to be successful as a manager, then, then you need good people around you just to support you and, and make sure that uh, you go in the right direction. But it just seems to be a huge you know, pool of experience that you can delve in. He's got fantastic people he's worked with as well who can, can mentor him and, and help him along the way so uh, in terms of the advantages that he has uh, in comparison to maybe other guys who are trying to find their way with him, you know, obviously he's got a foot in the door. But you have to be mindful of the fact that you can be a great player but then when you do become a coach manager then the players will give you a little bit of leeway but eventually they they want to understand that you can tell them things and, and help them and enable them to become better players and, and better people so uh, that's that's the key in uh, understanding what, what players demand and what they want from you as a coach and manager. Is it difficult to get used to the fact that you, you can't cross that white line and get involved because I mean you s seem to still kick every ball? Oh, you never lose that I mean it's I've got a great job but it's something I really enjoy but it's uh, Place playing, playing the game, and, and Stephen initially will, will understand that. But um, he's had a fantastic career, one of the great players in, in the modern age, and uh, no doubt, with his standing at Liverpool, you, you can certainly see him having a role there in, in the future. I think Liverpool, um, not, I want to tell him what to do, but if he was part of the Liverpool operation, I think we're going ways and means to, to involve Stephen in the future. Thank you. Mark, um, just, you just briefly mentioned his contribution to, to football and to you know, our game. What do you, what do you think it takes for a player like that to make such a big contribution? Um, I think the obvious one is strength of character. You, you have to have a real drive and, and desire from within. I think it comes from within. Um, you're shaped by your environment as well. A lad from Liverpool has great pride in, in the share of Liverpool uh, and, uh, and he's always given everything for his, for his hometown club and I think that empathy that he's displayed right throughout his career is something that should be applauded. I think it's, it's there for everybody to see what the impact he's had on the club. It's been a period where I believe they just slipped from that top Along where, where they were when I, as, as I remember them, when I was playing, they were going through the top helps and winning Premier League titles or championships as they were in those days. Um, so it's been a long time since they won the Premier League. But, uh, 
along the way they've still picked up trophies and Stephen's been a huge part of that. Um, and for the most part he's been a defining character and the one that's really pushed trophies towards Liverpool in the past. Uh, the obvious one is the European Cup final, the Champions League final where really he dragged them best blue places back into a game they should have lost. Uh, and I think there's only very few players in, in the game or in the history of the game that have that quality and that ability to be able to do that. And uh, Stephen was certainly was one of those players. Talking about your opponents on um, Saturday, we just talked about management and how difficult it can be in the Premier League is a tough league to manage in. How well has Sean Dyche done? Um, you know, I know Burnley are relegated now, but he has done a good job there. Yeah, I, I think it was always going to be difficult for Sean, but he's, um, he's kept his team honest, he's kept them competitive. Uh, nobody's really t turned them over to any great extent. They've always been very much in, in every game they've played, and I think that's great too. I mean, that shows that they've got a good uh, are working really hard. Uh, the standard's yeah. very high in the Premier League, as they've found out, but um, you can't question the character that uh, Sean has brought together and, and managed on that shows him great credit because it's very easy to to feel that it's um, a league that's a little bit beyond beyond you as a group but um, the skill of the managers to keep the group growing and certainly Sean's been able to do that and that's great to him and the players that he's uh, I speak to, uh, spoke to Ryan Shawcross briefly this week and he was saying that um, he believes that you were talking about players coming and you can pick from a different pool now. He believed that was down to you and the, the style of football you were, you're, you're playing and that you, he enjoys training and the squad enjoy training. Uh, how much credit can you take for the new... Oh, the, the credit all goes to the players. I, mean, uh, I, get, I can give them work, present them work and, and give them a little bit of structure and, and ideas that, that we feel, that I feel we, Will help them to improve as players, but first and foremost, they will embrace what, what you actually give them. And when you've got a group of players that do that and, and enjoy the work and come every day and show enthusiasm, which is a huge thing, um, people will be surprised that sometimes players will come to training and don't particularly want to be involved or engaged. But I don't see that as the group I've got. And that's a huge thing for me as a manager and my coaches that we have a group of players that every single day come with enthusiasm. <coughs> with a desire to get better every day, so uh, it's very easy for me to give them quality work that, that they will embrace and, and get better. Just one more. Uh, obviously, we've talked about Asmir, but do you think maybe a stumbling block could be the fact that he wants to play in Europe, that he might not want to sign a new contract? Um, well, like I said, uh, that will all come out when we, we sit down. Um, at the moment, we can't offer that, but the, the intention hopefully in the future is that we'll be able to do that. So, uh, understand players will always have ambitions, and uh, there's nothing wrong that with that. I'd, I'd encourage it, but uh, um, I think it's fair to say we, we can offer a lot of the things that the top players want in this, in this day and age. So, uh, um, I'm sure as we have the representatives will be thinking long and hard about uh, the options that they have and the options that we're offering. Is um, Asmir available for selection after his operation this week? Yes. No, I was going to say it's far big performance against Spurs, um, and he said after the game he didn't want to highlight any particular performances. But Mark Munez was particularly impressive uh, in defence. Is he a long-term solution for any problems you might have in the back court? I've been really pleased with, with Mark since he's walked through the door. He's uh, he's a guy who's got a great character. He's um, He's a patient guy. Sometimes I've, I've disappointed him, and uh, he hasn't had as many games as he would like. But um, he knows that I, I hold him in, in high regard, and, and whenever he's played, he's, he's never let me down. And, uh, and I think he's getting to a point where uh, he's showing maturity in his play, a real understanding of the Premier League. Difficult for for him when he initially came because he's a young player, different league. More physical league, I would suggest, and people suggest that's something that would go against him because he wants to be a centre back. But um, I think when he <coughs> saw his level of performance against Spurs, I think everybody now uh, believes that he's uh, an accomplished centre back and a that can play in that position in the, in the league. So uh, I have no worries whatsoever in terms of playing in, in that position.
position. Uh, obviously, long.